So some of the innovations uh, about the third generation of latex technologies relate to the print head and the inks. I've heard we have a new ink, the HP Latex Optimizer. So Kyle, can you explain us a bit more what is exactly this? Absolutely. The HP Latex Optimizer is our little secret. The other colors in the latex inks give us the great quality that people expect from latex, but this guy here gives us the speed. How does it work? Well, well, it's all about how you control the ink on the media before it's cured. Imagine that these balls represent the pigment that's in the ink. Mm -hmm. When we print at high speeds, the ink goes down very quickly, and there's the possibility that the inks could mix. This creates problems we call bleed or coalescence. Mm -hmm. You can see that in this, in this sample here, for example. Okay, I see, yeah, the lines are not straight and the colors are mixing. Exactly. So when we use the latex optimizer, imagine that this, that this small magnet represents the optimizer. We put down a very small amount and there's an opposite chemical charge in the pigment and the optimizer. When the pigment comes in contact, it's locked into place. So although you don't see the optimizer on the media, it's playing a very important role that allows us to uh, print much faster. I see. Can I see your sample again? Absolutely. This is the one without optimizer. And now you see with optimizer. Well, the lines now are perfect. No more color mixes. Yeah, and you can see in the area fills as well are, are much improved. OK. So does the optimizer help to improve adhesion in more substrates? Not really. The optimizer is just another ink, and it's the key to printing with high speed. OK. And what about ink efficiency? Does the optimizer cause the printer to consume more ink? No, not really. We use a very small amount of optimizer to achieve the desired effect. And in fact, it enhances a little bit the efficiency of the inks themselves. So net-net, it's about the same. But can the customer still decide to put or not put optimizer? Yes, the customer has that option, but we don't recommend it. With the advantages the optimizer brings, we expect that all customers will use it. So, another innovation on the third generation of latex inks is this anti-scratch agent. Could you explain us a bit more what is this? Yes, the third generation latex inks, they're some of the most advanced inks HP has ever made, and they include this anti-scratch component. It basically creates a protective film over the prints, and this is seen very easily, especially in smooth samples like vinyls and banners. Mm -hmm. uh, here I have an example of an echo solvent print which scratches very easily. Yeah, I see, I can scratch it. And this is the third generation latex print. Wow, impressive, I cannot scratch it. So that, you mentioned banners and vinyls, does it work in other uh, substrates like textiles or others? Well, for maximum protection you need a smooth surface. As textiles are basically porous and rough, uh, you don't get the same effect. So let's talk now about the print heads. How many print heads uh, do the new HP Latex 300 series have? Well, the 300 series printers have six print heads each. These are print heads that have been designed for the third generation latex inks. So if all the printers have six print heads, why the 360 is faster than the 330 and the 310? There's two important reasons, Juan. The first is that in the printer we, we move the carriage at a faster speed at 60 inches per second and we also have more curing power in the 360 model printer. Okay, and is there anything new in the print head? Yes, first of all we have a print head that's been created specifically for the optimizer fluid mm -hmm. and then in the other colors we have improved the thermal consistency of the print heads which gives greater color consistency. As you may know when there are thermal changes in the print head, when it gets hotter or colder, this can have a small effect on the size of the drop that's ejected. This can lead to color variations in the print. With these print heads, we are able to maintain consistent temperature, which gives us greater color consistency. I see, so the customer will not see differences between side to side to the printer, or at the beginning or the end of the plot? Yes, 95% of, of colors that are printed will be within 2 delta E, and this ensures that customers will have uh, the color matching that they need for demanding applications like vehicle graphics, wall coverings, or other tiling applications where color consistency is very important. So that's fantastic. Let me try to summarize. So we have this new third generation of inks and print heads that deliver fast speeds at high quality, uh, deliver scratch resistant banners and vinyls, and also very good color consistency. Did I get it right? Absolutely. Very good, Joan. I'm impressed. Thank you. You have made it very easy. Thank you, Kyle.
So some of the innovations on the new HP Latex 300 printers relate to the curing system and the media management. Uh, Ramon, can you help us to understand those a bit better? There are several new innovations. Where would you like to start? So let's maybe start with the high efficiency curing system. What exactly is this? Well, you know that now we print high image quality at faster speed. Yes, thanks to the HP Latex optimizer. Correct. But Printing faster means curing faster, and this is what the high efficiency curing system is about. It is not only able to cure faster, but also cures at lower temperature and uses less energy to cure. Sounds very promising. So how, how does it work? So the operation principle is very simple, it's using hot air, but the trick, as always, is the details. Everything starts here, so these heating elements blow air inside of the curing module. Inside of the curing module, the airflow stabilizes for temperature, for speed, and for pressure. And then the air exits the curing module through hundreds of small nozzles and it's blown onto the substrate. These micro jets of hot air are able to cure the ink but are not damaging or are not deforming the substrate. That's very good. And, and why the printer prints faster then? There are two reasons. First one is this guy to blame. These uh, heating elements go from uh, zero to their operation temperature in just a few seconds. This enables the printer to go from standby to ready to print in less than two minutes. And the second reason? The second reason is that we use convection as the heat transfer mechanism. This is very efficient, so this enables to use lower temperature and to uh, submit the substrate to this temperature during a shorter time. Then we are able to either print faster using the same power or to print at the same speed using half of the power. So what about media? Is there any difference in the medias we support with the new HP Latest 300 printers? There's plenty, but I think that Ellie can give you more details on this. Hi Ellie. Hi Joan. Yes, as Ramon said, the high efficiency curing operates at lower temperatures, apply it over less time. Mm -hmm. This reduces the thermal stress, apply it on very heat sensitive materials. And can you be a bit more specific? Sure. Let's take, for example, a very commonly used low-cost banner. These materials are sensitive to high temperatures. When you apply heat on them, they can deform in two different ways, from the sides towards the center and along the job. The high efficiency curing is preventing these deformations from happening. Okay, so does this mean that with the new HP Latex 300 printers, do we support more materials now? Not really. We are already supporting many types of materials. The difference now is that we are able to print faster, with a better quality, on heat-sensitive materials. Yeah, but you know, HP Latex is always about doing more applications, so aren't we really supporting more substrates? Yes, in fact, we are now supporting polypropylene films, like this one, mm -hmm. and also with the HP Latex 360, we are able to print on very porous materials, such as mesh or textile, thanks to the ink collector. The ink collector. So, Ramon, what is this exactly? So this is a very clever design. So what you have here is a print platen. This print platen is used for non-porous substrates like paper or vinyl. This is what's usual instead of the machine. But if the operator can replace this by the ink collector. And this ink collector is used for high porosity materials like, for example, mesh. Then the ink that gets through the material is collected by these foams and then the printer is not in stain. That's very good. So let me try to summarize. We have a new high efficiency curing system that helps us either to print faster or reduce the energy consumption, helps us to improve performance on very heat sensitive materials, and also enables us to print on more applications like polypropylene uh, films. Also, we have an ink collector that helps us to print on porous medias like textiles and mesh. Did I get it all correctly? Absolutely, 100%. You well. Thank you, that was very useful. You're Thank welcome. you, Ellie and Ramon. You're welcome. So, Olivier, usability is a key factor for our customers, correct? Yes, absolutely. You know, we live in the digital era and uh, the new generation uses a lot of digital technology. They use touchscreens, smartphones, tablets. They are always connected. They don't want to read manuals. They just want simplicity. And that's precisely our goal, no? simplifying everything so they can focus on printing. Okay. And what are we doing about it in our new HP Latex 300 printers? Well, the very first thing we've done is designing a new touchscreen user interface, uh, easier to use with full color screen, very similar to the smartphones and tablets that we use. So no more buttons? No, uh, actually, uh, besides the touchscreen, uh, we have also the whole software that is very simple, very intuitive. We know operators change frequently, so no need for special training. Are we still showing instructions in the control panel? 
Yes, we do. Well, in case it's needed, operators can see instructions and animations on the front panel, but we've gone beyond. Uh, we also have QR codes that link to videos that the operator can see on their smartphones to get help. Wow, that's very cool. So, I also heard the printers are now web connected. What is this for, exactly? Well, remember, uh, we live in the digital era, so everything is connected. So first, and more basic, you can get free software upgrades. And second, most important, you can also access from the printer to the media profiles that HP publishes on the media locator. So no need to create special media profiles, so it saves a lot of time. I see, so this means that if I have a new media, I can search it in the media locator and just download it automatically into the printer? Yes, so once it's downloaded, you can also adjust uh, the media profile. So you can uh, um, put more or less ink, you can select more passes, you can use four color instead of six. So that really depends on what your job requires. That's very easy, nobody can say any longer that printing on HP Latex printers is complex. No, no, that, that was exactly our goal. No? So, but it would be good you talk with Alan. Uh, there are many things that we've done with RIP vendors to make the experience even easier. Okay, more things. So, hey, Alan, Alan, what do we have done? How you doing? Well, I've got a couple of new words for you. Have you heard about Comton and Halfton? Are you kidding? I always wonder who puts this name. So what is this? So let me try and explain. So contone and halftone refer to the processing techniques that uh, transform the digital image into the printed dots on the paper. And that's done by a raster image processor, or a RIP. And that can be done in two ways. So if the printer is halftone, the RIP manages the process and all the control points. And to give you an idea, that can be a bit like trying to get into a Formula One car. It's got a lot of buttons, a lot of dials, a lot of controls, and it's not easy. So that can turn into errors, suboptimal performance, it can create waste, it can create a waste of time. So in the third generation of the latex printers, what we've done is move to Comton. And in a Comton printer, the printer can handle many of the steps that a RIP would do in a traditional halftone printer. So that makes it much easier for the operator. So instead of the more complex Formula One interface, now you have something a bit more like a PlayStation controller. Mm -hmm. It's a lot simpler. You can still drive, but it's much easier to handle. You still have all the control that you need, it's just that the printer is doing some of the more complex things for you, like figuring out how much optimizer to put down depending on the media you have. I see, and I guess this connects with the media profiles that Olivier was talking about. Exactly, so the, in a content printer, the media profiles from the media locator are universal, so you can use them across any RIP. And the RIP also processes faster because the printer is doing a lot of the work for it. What about color management? Is there any difference? So in color management, yes, we, we have made a step forward. So the uh, in a Comton printer, color management is a lot simpler. So you can still manage color from the RIP, but we let the printer handle the complex color transformation steps and optimize those for our technology. Also, the 360 has an embedded spectrophotometer, and the 330 and the 310 have an embedded densitometer. And both of these sensors are used to calibrate and control color automatically so you don't have any output color variations. And what's the difference between the two of them? So the embedded densitometer on the 330 and the 310 is a color sensor. It's used to calibrate color, and that's essential if you want to get consistent color between prints. The printer will print a calibration pattern, and then the sensor will scan that pattern, and then the printer can then apply a correction if there's anything wrong, and you get the best color output. The same thing happens with the 360. It has an embedded spectrophotometer. It does exactly the same function, but it also lets the user generate an automatic ICC profile. And that's essential if you want to hit exactly the right colors for your print job. It's also very useful if you have multiple printers to calibrate those to the same target. Then you can do the same job on any printer and hit the exact same colors. Okay, that's very good. So let me see if I get it all. So we have now printers that are very easy and intuitive to use, that also work, are web connected, so I can download automatically the media profiles, mm -hmm. and they are very accurately managing the color and the color calibrations. Is that right? Yes. Exactly. Yeah, that's like right. You got it. Yeah, that you got was it. very useful. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Alan and Thank Olivia. You're welcome. Okay. Bye.